Howdy. Welcome. Okay, here we are. We're back. Uh, welcome, parents. Today, we are doing a continuation of our mindfulness skills lecture. The skill today is on observing. So I'll take you through it. Uh, something you need to know about observing is it all starts with mindfulness. And as I've said before in some of our lectures, As I've said before in some of our lectures, 40% um, of the time in DBT when you don't know the answer, the answer is probably mindfulness, or at least in mindfulness you get some kind of credit there. Um, so with mindfulness, there's three reasons in DBT why we would do mindfulness. The first reason is to increase our ability to pay attention, and certainly as parents, we need to pay attention. This is to what people are saying to us. This is to what's going on around us. This is even how we're feeling while something's going on. It's really important. The second reason why we'd have some mindfulness is we want to reduce suffering. We want to be able to reduce our tendency to suffer and to go through any kind of emotional pain, which is something that happens for parents all the time too. Parents feel and they experience pain. The third reason is that we also want to be able to be in tune with feelings and with emotions and things and know, know where we're at. So let's look at the big three. There's understanding what's going on around us. There's understanding what's going on within us. And then there's understanding how what is right now is very different than maybe what just happened or what we think might have the potential of happening. And that's a really big deal. For parents, there's typically two problems we have that can be really fixed with mindfulness. One is that a lot of parents spend a lot of time in the past just thinking about what's happened. And a lot of parents really, uh, they spend a lot of time doing what's called future tripping. So they're thinking about the future and they're just getting worried moment by moment. Um, so, so let's start with wise mind, which I've explained in the wise mind skill uh, You know, for any future if you want to look at wise mind, you check the wise mind video. But basically, wise mind is the place that we're in when we need to make a wise and rational decision. And we want to be aware of our emotions, but we don't want to be enslaved by them. We want to be both reasonable and we want to be in tune with our emotions at the same time. And typically, when we're parents and we're experiencing wise mind, that's when we make the best decisions. That's when we say the most effective comments. And that's when we tend to be in our groove in terms of just being able to work with our loved ones, our children. So in the mindfulness module, we have the what skill. And the what skill is what kind of things do we need to do in order to practice mindfulness. And I like to look at it also as what things can we do to get us closer to wise mind when we're currently not feeling it so or we're, when we're not in it and there are three skills in the what skill there's observe describe and participate and today I'm going to spend a lot of time talking about observing so observing is the act of paying attention and understanding what's happening right at the present moment or in other words, and this is what uh, Linehan brought up in her skills training manual, she talked about observing is the act of walking through a room full of furniture with the lights on and being aware of all the furniture. And not observing is like walking through a room that's completely dark, full of furniture, and you don't know where the furniture is. So very often in our family, especially in our relationship with our children, particularly in our relationship with our adolescents, we might feel like we're in the dark a lot of the time. And one way that we can begin to feel like we have some light in the relationship is just taking a moment to observe, observe what's happening right now. Adolescents are changing so rapidly that it's very easy for a parent to think about how our kids used to be or to think that we know who our kid is and because of that, we don't need to know anymore. When often during adolescence, the best thing a parent can do is just be right in the present moment, watching what's going on right now. So 
one thing we can do when we observe is we can just be very quiet and still and we can just pay attention and we can keep track of our thoughts without being judgmental of them. And that looks a lot like this. There it is. That's what it looks like when a person's being observant. That's what I was doing. Uh, during this process, I'm just paying attention to what is around me. I can also take a moment to pay attention to how I'm feeling. This can be physically. I feel like my upper back is tight. Uh, I have my arm right here. I have it resting on my leg. And I know the feeling of when my arm is on my leg, just kind of resting on my leg. I'm aware of that. And just to be very aware of what's going on right in the present moment can be super important. Uh, another thing can be if I'm upset. If I'm upset about something and I'm feeling sad, I can think about it and think, what is it that has me feeling sad? And what does being sad feel like right now? There's many different ways that we can practice being observant. It sounds easy, but it can be very hard to do. It can be very hard to just be aware of what's going on without judging. And here's a, there's a number of things we can do. One thing that we can do is we can find an object. You know, for example, I have this pen right here. And I can just focus on it and focus on only that pen. I'm going to do that right now. There. Just taking that time to focus on just that pen. Everything else could be really zoned out. And I can focus on that. Okay, observing in mindfulness is focus. Taking a time while our teenager or while our child is talking to us and to just focus on what they're saying and to pay attention to them is a really big deal. It really means a lot to other people and it, it can mean a lot to us and in our relationship too. Something else we can do is we can be aware of everything at once. Instead of focusing on an object, we can focus on every little thing in our surroundings. And so I'll do that right now. And as that's going on, I'll tell you what's going on around me. I'm sitting in a chair right here. This cushion right here feels very comfortable. I can hear, I can hear rain coming outside. There's just rain on the roof all around. When I look this way, I can look out the window and I can see some, I can see some rain. I can also see some holiday lights. Look over here, I can look up. There's a light right there shining to give me light and film. And I have that going on as well. Uh, this is just an example one of the many examples of how to observe. I will say to observe is the one skill that sounds extremely simple, but it's the one that we use the most as parents and as human beings. It's the one that we try to do as often as we can. And if we are trying to be mindful, which means we're trying to reduce our suffering we're trying to be aware of our surroundings. We're trying to pay attention to how we're feeling. And we don't feel like we're in a place of wise mind. Then we can just take a moment. We can just observe. Well, what frame of mind am I in? Am I in reason mind? Am I in emotion mind? And just by observing that, I really want to get to a place of wise mind. Am I getting closer to wise mind right now? I don't know. Depends. But this is observing. Uh, thank you so much for tuning into this video. Uh, tune in. More videos to come. Thank you.